Hey, what's up, Precious Metal peeps? This is Brian Kuzmar of Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in stormy Lauderdale by the sea. Well, not quite stormy yet, but it looks like it's going to. A couple rain clouds moving in. Man, it's kind of been a, a rainy, stormy season for the summer here, but you know what? Uh, uh, beats the hell out of hurricanes, knock on wood. We've got, what, another two or three weeks to go before we're done with hurricane season? Again, knock on wood. <laughs> so, hey, let's uh, start off with... Uh, uh, a little article here that I seen and by the way I owe you an apology too I thought that the markets were going to be closed on Monday but apparently it looks like New York was closed I thought the post office was closed too but they're out driving trucks around you know so much for my holiday knowledge I guess I kinda blew Columbus Day as far as knowing uh, take a look at this article I just saw this is your homework by the way I'm gonna start out homework session right away get the unfun stuff out but really your homework should be the fun part of, uh, of this learning about uh, what moves gold and silver and the drivers and who to listen to and who not to listen to and uh, what a dollar really is and how the dollar impacts gold and silver and vice versa these are all things that I want to teach you so you can make your own decisions you don't have to listen to some guy on the internet telling you when you should or should not buy gold or silver because <clears throat> really uh, videos like this and videos online other than my daily updates like today uh, which I'm just kind of giving you my assessment and, and, and what I feel is going to happen. Uh, however, uh, these are not daily predictions per se, and they're really, uh, uh, I, I shouldn't say anything other than I highly encourage you to, to educate yourself. Uh, and I'm going to give you the tools and, and the things that I've kind of learned over the years. I'm going to give you uh, sites and things that I think are pertinent. And here's one of them. Uh, Doug Casey's International Man. Now, now he may be a little bit uh, bullish in, uh, at times, but however, um, I like uh, this article, and I think if you do a pause on my video right now, and uh, I don't think you can do a cut and paste on a video, but if you type this in, is gold cheap at $2,000 an ounce, and then type in Doug Casey, uh, you'll come up with this article right here. And uh, again, this is my homework for you for tonight. It takes you a couple, listen, it takes you just a few minutes to read this. Look how long this article is. And again, I think, uh, as I've been telling you, if you learn this stuff yourself, you know, you'll be smarter than the average bear, and you won't be talking out your ass or passing along bad information. Uh, that's just my opinion. Uh, and <clears throat> this Doug Casey article, again, it's pretty good. It talks about the crack-up boom. Uh, trillions of dollars have been spent. It's a little more heady uh, and a little more technical than uh, uh, some of the articles I throw at you. Uh, however, uh, again, I highly recommend you read it. I think it's a good thing to read. Um, and I, this thing was uh, particularly interesting to me. Many commentators have pointed out the similarities between what is happening today and what occurred during the stagflationary 70s, 71 to 81, and the Great Depression of the 30s, 1929 to 1946. But what we experience is a combination of two. Uh, the only thing I would add in there is add in a little bit of 2008 uh, and uh, nonstop stimulus into that scenario right here. I think Doug missed. Uh, but other than that, uh, good read. Highly recommend you read it. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this correctly, but the Misesian, uh, Misesian crack up boom. Uh, very interesting stuff. Like I said, uh, uh, you can pause this uh, video right now and and read about it, or yeah, you can do it afterwards because I'm not going to be talking much about this. Anyway, make sure you research this, and uh, that's your homework for tonight. Uh, <clears throat> and I shouldn't be giving you homework, but you know this is stuff. Again, I suggest that you watch. It'll make you smarter, in my opinion. Uh, I, I pulled this aside, and this really is about, is Joe Biden about to send silver soaring? Well, it's, uh, the article's a little bit misleading. However, it was kind of interesting to, uh, to, to see this, and because it's kind of true, because what, what they're talking about is uh, uh, we're moving more towards solar power, and solar uses a lot of, you know, a lot of, not a lot of silver, but there's a, a lot, well, there's a lot of silver used in the uh, solar power industry. And they're talking about that if uh, Biden wins, that... We're going to see an acceleration in that, uh, uh, where is it down here? I think uh, Goldman was talking about it. There it goes right here. Bottom line, Goldman once goes once again goes long silver, expecting the precious metal to hit $30 in the coming months. That's a good sign, folks. Um, earlier this year, we initiated a long silver trade recommendation, and this is Goldman Sachs, and then closed out of it after silver prices rallied by 50%, briefly touching our $30 target. Now with the silver at $24 an ounce and a few potential upward solar surprises in the coming months, we are reopening the trade. Well, <clears throat> they're expecting a, maybe a potential Biden win, which the green, uh, uh, the green plan would get instituted, and then you're going to see a big increase in the solar panels and an increase in the use of silver. However, even this article states that without a Biden win, we are still going to see a large increase of silver being used in solar 
panels. So it's a win-win for us no matter what. And for people that aren't a big Joe Biden fan that do hold gold and silver, well, hey, look at it this way. If he does win, he'll make you rich quicker. <laughs> so uh, let me move along to this. Hey, the article, I put it out yesterday. Uh, well, I put this uh, video out yesterday. I want to thank everybody for watching it. A lot of you watched it. In fact, uh, my video last Friday in this video, it got the highest amount of views I've gotten so far. It made me feel really good. So uh, I appreciate everyone watching, liking my videos, and uh, uh, subscribing to them. Uh, <clears throat> anyways, uh, if you didn't catch it, I released this yesterday. U.S. Mint raises the price of silver tomorrow. Be ready for a financial reset. Uh, and, you, uh, and of course we put in there warning bullshit because it is in fact kind of bullshit. Uh, the U.S. Mint did raise prices, uh, however, but not on really the price of silver, just on their collectible products. Oh, if you want to see the video, here it is right here. Here's the headline. It's in our, uh, it's on my uh, YouTube page for commercial rare coins and precious metals. Uh, take a look at it. It's not that long either, so I, I shouldn't bore you that much. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at the Wall Street Journal here. Uh, of course, this today is all about nothing, nothing else but uh, battle lines drawn in the Barrett confirmation uh, hearings. This has no bearing or very little bearing in my opinion that I can see uh, uh, with uh, with the price of gold and silver so it's mostly politics so I'm not going to go there. Didn't see anything in here other than tech stocks, uh, power markets higher. Nothing that uh, uh, any surprises, anything about uh, uh, the Fed action, anything about the dollar uh, declining in value or a dollar strength or anything like that. Uh, markets up a little bit again, so we're going to skip over this real quick, and I'm going to head over to the uh, spot prices. And again, as I said, I owe you. I say again a lot. My apology. <laughs> uh, uh, I owe you an apology because last Friday I felt that I thought that the uh, markets were closed on Monday, and apparently the markets were open today. And I was kind of oblivious because it seems like a holiday. It was kind of quiet today. I don't know about you, but it was quiet for us today than normal. Uh, so uh, New York was open, obviously. And let's see, close at $19.22, $25, you know, about sideways from where it was on Friday. And uh, I can't remember what I said. I felt that it was going to be sideways from the European markets. And uh, if New York was open on Monday, I thought, or Tuesday, it was going to be uh, sideways. And that's exactly what we got. Uh, uh, slow holiday trading really didn't get banged too bad. And that's probably just because of the surprise up market with the uh, uh, dollar falling and the strength in precious metals there. Uh, Take a look at the uh, world spot prices here, about the same, trading about the same. And I suspect, I suspect that uh, based on what I'm seeing right here, I think we may see some strength in the markets tomorrow, at least par value. And I think we're going to see some higher markets with uh, uh, gold, silver, and platinum tomorrow. Just my opinion. Again, don't trade on this advice. Make your own opinion. Uh, however, uh, world spot prices seem to be up right now, uh, as does uh, for gold, silver, and platinum. And uh, typically, if this holds true later in the evening and this is a little bit higher, it usually means New York should, not usually mean, but trend-wise, trend it's been showing me that New York will open higher tomorrow. So if this market holds up tonight and pumps up a little bit tonight, I think you'll see a higher uh, New York opening uh, for gold, silver, and platinum tomorrow. Just my opinion. Uh, move along from there, kind of quiet trading day. I don't see anything big happening unless some black swans uh, or something really, you know, who knows what could happen tomorrow but uh, and tonight. Uh, before the markets open, but I kind of feel that we're going to see about the same markets, maybe a little bit stronger, because I'm really surprised at the strength on a slow day like today, and the fact that it kind of stayed the same and didn't get monkey hammered down. Uh, so kind of curious to see what happens tomorrow. Uh, I'm sure you are as well. Uh, let's move along to a few other things here. You know, if you ever notice, my company name does say commercial rare coins <laughs> and precious metals. Uh, so, uh, you know, and I talk about precious metals on the show all the time, and I'm, you know, I'm very well versed in it. I've grown up doing it. It's just, you know, and I've done rare coins as well. So I'm kind of, I do a couple different things, and I'm, and I'm very good at both of them. I never talk about rare coins, but I wanted to throw this in here just kind of for fun. Uh, there was a multi-million dollar coin sale this week. Uh, some of the stuff did not sell. Uh, some of the big stuff didn't sell, and there could be different reasons for that. I'm not quite sure uh, what the uh, uh, reasons why some of the larger uh, coins did not sell, but I think it's from what they call the uh, Mor Morlon collection, uh, offering were four million dollar coins, uh, 1794 uh, flowing hair dollar, and uh, Morlon purchases for a record sum of 10 million dollars. Can you imagine buying a coin for 10 million dollars? It's just incredible, and I'm in the business, and I still find that just absolutely amazing. But you know, the thing with these kind of coins is they're like art. You know, there's a 1796. That's not the 94 dollars. See if they put the 94 dollar in here. 
Uh, nope, don't see it here. However, <clears throat> let's see, what did that 96 uh, small day, small letters, dollars, purchase for a bargain price? Is, there you go, folks. That's a bargain at $705,000. Uh, rare coins, and let me explain something to you folks out there. there. There's rare coins and precious metals, apples and oranges, completely different thing. And where the two meet is a shady area called uh, modern commems. <laughs> I shouldn't say that, uh, modern rarities. That's just my opinion uh, because, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe modern stuff might be rare one day. But, I'm, again, I kind of digress here. I started going into coins, and I might start doing some coin videos as well. Uh, let me move along because I'm probably boring my precious metal peeps here with this. And uh, I'm going to bore my precious metal peeps a little bit more because this is really cool. And these could be uh, anything, $20 gold pieces, whatever. Go on YouTube, take a look at this video right here, How Coins Were Minted a Century Ago. Type in YouTube, How Coins Were Minted a Century Ago. And I'm telling you, this is just so cool. Uh, it's a black and white. It's, uh, it's got, uh, uh, oh, I'm going to say, <laughs> words on it so you can read it. I just forgot what they called that. Uh, anyways, <laughs> oh man, it's been a long day. So uh, it, it's a great little video, a pile of gold bullion, the raw materials from which coins are made. It represents uh, $50,000. Whoa, 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 whoa. I got to back that up. Hold on. Did that just say 150000 Uh A pile of gold and the raw materials from which coins are made represents one. Let's see what $150,000 worth of gold looks like. This is funny. I'll tell you why. There's a hundred, those are freaking bricks, man, $150,000. I recently took a picture of a $1,033,000 worth of gold next to a toaster and a beer bottle. Now look at this. This is uh, back uh, whenever, <laughs> uh, 1907, 1907 actually. Look what $150,000 of gold was. And if you get a chance to see my picture of gold next to the beer bottle, it's really cool, or next to the toaster. Uh, this is just incredible uh, at the scale of events. I'm even blown away by this picture, and I should know. I know. I know this stuff. Uh, anyway, great video. I'm going to kind of hop along here. Everyone knows how money melts nowadays. Here we see the oil burning finish, which changes solid. Ooh, that's interesting. Even then they knew that money melts. Uh, there it is coming out of the uh, furnace. Uh, there these guys are pouring it into heavy rollers and strips. Uh, it's a long video, and it's really... A 40-ton friction drive. Um, <clears throat> I've seen this already before, but I'm still fascinated by it. Uh, here they are feeding the blanks into the machine, and we are stamping coins now. Uh, these are probably $20 gold pieces, perhaps. I don't know. I don't remember. It's been a while since I saw the video, and uh, I'm not going to ruin the ending for you, even though you know what the ending is. It's a finished coin. <laughs> so, hey, listen, watch this video. You will really, really like it, how coins were minted a century ago. Uh, I'm going to give it a thumbs up right here, too, because I have not done that. Give this guy a thumbs up for uh, doing that video. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, that's it for the day. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in lovely Lauderdale-by-the-Sea. Call us anytime at 954-493-8811 for live precious metal quotes. Uh, any questions we can answer for you, what the best deal of the day is, uh, please take a look at our videos. Like them, if you will, uh, and hit that subscribe button and hit that bell up there, and you'll get... Every time I put a new video up, you'll get a notice on it on your YouTube. Uh, I don't think it'll bother your computer, just your YouTube. So don't worry about me pestering you on your phone. I don't think that happens. Uh, anyway, 954-493-8811. Really appreciate you watching. Have yourself a great evening. Let's see what happens tomorrow. Talk to you then. Wow. Lovely Lauderdale by the Sea. Figured I'd just share this little rainbow at the end of the day with you as well. Good night.